at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida, where excitement is building from Florida to Israel and around the world over tonight's historic liftoff of an Israeli spacecraft in the first privately funded mission to the moon. The launch window expected to open just minutes from now in Cape Canaveral, Florida, and I-24 News is there. We have a team of reporters uh, on the ground and elsewhere waiting for this launch to happen. Our I-24 News anchor Michelle McCory is just steps away from the launch site uh, at the Kennedy Space Center. I-24 News correspondent Ariel Levin Waldman is in Yahud, Israel at Mission Control. And we also have Michael Wall, a senior writer with Space.com, who's joining me as well. But we're going to begin with Michelle McCory. Michelle, what a night for space exploration and for Israel. Absolutely, Derek. A tremendous excitement for this launch, certainly in Israel, because this will make Israel the fourth country to land on the moon if this is successful, following the former Soviet Union, the United States, China, and then it would be the tiny country of Israel to make history. This will also be a historical launch in the perspective of it being the first privately funded moon landing, if it is all successful, and it's also going to be the least expensive moon landing. One of the issues is that it's trying to promote less expensive moon landing to make it more commercially viable and this is going to be a huge boost for that and most significantly perhaps is that it is intended to inspire national pride it's intended to inspire Israelis to quite literally reach for the stars Derek and Michelle, we're just about a minute away from liftoff there. Pretty exciting. I want to stay with you uh, as we keep our camera trained uh, on the launch pad there. Uh, this mission is supposed to be historic. It is historic, but also it'll cost less and take longer to actually make it to the moon. Uh, what do you think about the excitement and the just the, the focus here for Israel on this launch? Well, uh, at, at this stage, uh, Derek, just to keep you updated, about a minute uh, before takeoff, that is when the propellant tank pr pressurization to flight pressure begins. So we're getting very near the, the process if it is indeed going to be on time at 8.45 p.m. Eastern Standard. Right. Now, this is coming in at a bargain for Israel. Okay, uh, Derek, I'm going to have to send it back to you. Yeah. It appears as though we are ready to take off. Right, they're going to count down for us here, Michelle. We are about 12 seconds away from liftoff. We can hear the the boosters uh, kind of firing up, but we'll see if this actually happens. Anything could delay this. Let's listen in. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Ignition. Incredible pictures, an incredible liftoff there uh, as this Israeli spacecraft makes its way skyward on this trek to the moon. It won't actually make it to the moon until almost the middle of April, but this launch is historic nonetheless. Michelle McCoy, I want to bring you back in. What's it like just being there and seeing this as, as it happens? Derek, an unbelievable moment, blazing lights, the, the roaring sound of the rocket. Everybody here is just in awe, watching, as you say, potentially the beginning of history being made. Now, Derek, about uh, 32 minutes after the launch, that is when the Israeli moon lander is going to be deployed. And then two minutes after that, it's going to send its first communication signal to mission control in Yehud, Israel. And that's the first indication that Israel is really on track to make it to the moon and to make history. Ariel Levin Waldman, I want to go to you as we watch these live pictures uh, of this spacecraft make its way. Ariel, what is the excitement there where you are? 
Well, everybody was just standing up, cheering and clapping as they saw that spaceship lift off. Now, we actually got to see it twice in a sense because there was a 45 second delay on our feed right there. But you could see everybody in the room was embracing as they witnessed this rocket carrying the first ever Israeli moon probe lift off and begin its eight week journey towards the moon. Now, everyone here is obviously extremely excited seeing that this is going to make Israel the fourth power to ever make its way to the surface of the moon. And that puts Israel in many ways in a very elite club. And that is very much in the spirit of what's being called the startup nation around here. And this space program was in itself, itself a uh, startup of sorts, being a private company attempting to win actually a space prize to get there, now reaching the culmination of an eight-year project. And a lot of Israelis are taking a lot of pride in what they say is Israeli ingenuity putting them on the international map for scientific achievements. And, and Ariel, much has been made of the name of this spacecraft, Bereshit, which is Genesis in Hebrew in the beginning. Uh, talk about the, just the symbolic nature of this launch for Israel. Well, it's very symbolic for a few different reasons. Obviously, it's the beginning of Israel's uh, attempt at making any sort of space flight to the moon or any further space trips, but it's also the beginning of a new era in space exploration. This is the first ever privately funded mission to the moon, and it's serving as the test bed for a lot of new technologies, particularly bringing a very lightweight and very cheap lander or orbital craft to the general market. Now, Space IL is already in negotiations with some German companies, Companies. The idea being that within the next few years to produce a commercially available off-the-shelf lander for putting small payloads into orbit. This would be anywhere from uh, up to 330 pounds, 150 kilograms, and this would allow the test bed for new technologies. And as you can see, they have uh, on the screen behind me, everybody's cheering as they're seeing what appears to be uh, the rocket thrusters firing as right. the thing achieves higher and higher altitudes and greater speeds. We're about three minutes into the launch now. Ariel, um, um, as well we're watching these other pictures with you. We and Ariel, we're watching these live pictures with you as the, the rockets separate uh, from the spacecraft. This separation is, is what the clapping was about where you are. You mentioned the delay there. But it's pretty exciting to see, pretty powerful to see uh, these pictures here. Uh, I want to bring in Michael Wall, writer for Space.com. Michael, talk about this mission and the mechanics of it. It's going to take longer and cost less, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the total price tag is about a hundred million dollars for this mission, and that's yeah, and that includes the actual rocket. So and, and part of the reason it's cheap is because it's actually yet yeah, it's like sharing a like rocket ride. Um, there there are a couple other satellites on this Falcon 9 rocket that just lifted off, and so that's that's how it's going to take so long for for this thing to get to the moon because it because it has to go up to to sort of Earth orbit first, which is where these other satellites are are going. And then it kind of has to line everything up and wait for the moon to get in the right spot for it to perform its kind of go to the moon maneuvers. And um, so that's that's like why that's that's pretty much why this isn't like like a straight shot to the moon, which would only take about four or five days. It just sure. Cause, cause, yeah, I mean, they didn't have their own rocket, their own powerful rocket to just send them on on a direct trajectory. But that's that's totally fine. No, I mean, I mean, we just have to wait about eight weeks to see if it works. But I mean. Yeah, that's not a big deal. The spacecraft's actually going to use the, the atmosphere in, in orbit, right, to make its trek. Uh, it's been described as like a slingshot method. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, like it's going to go in these ever-expanding orbits, getting kind of farther and farther away from the Earth over the course of the next few weeks. And and sort of during this time, too, all the mission team's going to they're going to be checking the, the various spacecraft systems, making sure everything's working fine and that they can track the spacecraft and communicate with it. And so it'll, yeah, it'll like, it'll be like, it'll be like a time for them to just, just kind of check out, out everything and make, make sure everything. And then, I mean, hopefully by the time everything is ready for, for the lunar injection maneuver and that sort of thing, they'll, they'll have confirmed that the spacecraft's in good health and they'll, yeah, they'll be confident that it's actually ready for that, for that big engine firing that'll send it to the moon. And, and Michael, what we're seeing on the left, the, the, the smaller kind of light that's flashing, appears to be the return of the booster rocket. It's going to actually come back to Earth, land on a barge uh, in the ocean <laughs> as a reusable uh, piece of equipment, yeah. right? Yeah, that's another exciting thing about this launch. Um, this is a rocket that, yeah, yeah, that is reusable. And that, yeah, that's one of the things that 
Yeah, yeah, actually, SpaceX is famous for. Oh, there, there's an engine burn as it's coming down. So this is actually the like third flight for for this rocket first stage. So it's it's already flown two times before and done two of these landings before. It's going for the third landing right now, and that's another very exciting aspect of this mission is is the whole SpaceX side of things. Um, how like they're like trying to make space launch very cheap by by like making it like rapidly reusable and um they've gotten very good at it they've they've already aced about 36 37 of these landings maybe maybe a few more it's kind of hard to keep track they've they've done so many of these lately yeah. so yeah yeah i mean we're like, seeing a lot of exciting things happening and and yeah two of them are kind of encapsulated just in this one mission let's go back to rl levin waldman uh rl i mean you're there at mission control uh, in Israel, where uh, there was applause as this rocket took off, uh, but also uh, it's a bit of success, right? I mean, a major success for Israel. I mean, other than world powers, this just hasn't happened. Never before. Remember, the other people that have gotten to the moon was the United States, the Soviet Union, and China, each one being a major superpower. Israel's doing this on what's effectively for space travel a shoestring budget of only $95 million, the overwhelming majority of that being privately raised by uh, donors, philanthropists, and other interested parties. And this is going to be the beginning of a new set of space technologies. So obviously that is a major crowning achievement for uh, Israel's space program. And and of course, for the future of space flight. And we were mentioning some of these new beginnings before in the for field of the commercial interest, but also a lot of the scientists involved are seeing the major potential of what this mission can be. And it's not just in a cost and benefit analysis. A lot of the space agencies that are engaged in uh, moon travel are talking about the use of the moon as a test bed and a launching pad for further exploration of exoplanets as well as possibly hopping to Mars as the next major field of human and also uh, probe-based missions. The moon having, of course, one-sixth the gravity of the Earth sure. acts as a very good launching pad for any further uh, missions. And the idea here with the Bereshit launcher here is that it has a magnometer on this. This is to test the moon's magnetic fields and possibly determine whether or not there are valuable materials on the moon that could be useful in any further missions towards right. the, the rest of the solar system. That, of and course, Ariel, being uranium, thorium, and uh, tritium. Ariel, we just saw the rocket, the booster rocket, land back to Earth uh, in, a, in a pretty dramatic fashion. I mean, we expected this, right? Yes, um, this has been something that uh, Elon Musk SpaceX has been testing for a while now to uh, talk about bringing down the cost of space flight. Sure. Obviously, we have one big development in developing a very cheap and very lightweight lunar lander, and the second one being reusable spacecraft itself, the booster Our stages not having to go to waste, being able to be reused, right. and otherwise just bring down the overall cost of space travel. Sure. Ariel, I want to bring in Michelle McCory, who's there at the launch site at uh, the Kennedy Space Center. Michelle, uh, a pretty dramatic uh, launch, and now we have the landing of the booster rocket back on Earth. Yeah, very dramatic indeed, Derek. You guys were talking about the cost of this. As we said, it's coming under $100 million. Very significant. One of the biggest components is because Israel uh, is uh, uber-pooling it to the moon. Now, one of the biggest donors to this is South African-Israeli billionaire Morris Kahn. He donated about $40 million towards this project. Sure. And he said that he believes that every Israeli and every Jew will remember exactly where they were when Israel landed on the moon, and that this will be a moment of tremendous achievement Absolutely. for the people of Israel. Big thank you to everyone. Anchor Michelle McCory from Kennedy Space Center, I-24 News correspondent Ariel Levin-Waldman, and Michael Wall, senior writer with Space.com.